So now what I'm going to do is I'm going to make you understand how to find the canonical sum of product or product of sum of a Boolean expression. The word canonical means in order. Uh, what we are going to do is in order in order to what? So canonical sum of product means each term of a Boolean expression should be having all the literals in it. That means for sum of product expression, every term should be a min term in other words. So what I'm going to do is suppose say for example, we have an expression something like this a plus b dot c. This isn't canonical. Why? The reason behind this is every term, there are two terms, term one and term two. And there are three variables a, b, c. And every term do not contain all the variables. Only if all the term contains all the variables, only then we can tell canonical sum of product. That means all the terms are mean terms in canonical sum of product. So there are two methods of finding the canonical SOP of a Boolean expression. There are two procedures. What are they? One, first algebraically, which we have already learned just now. And the other one is using truth table, where we have learned how to find the SOP or POS expression from a truth table. That's pretty simple. What we are going to first learn is using algebraic techniques, how we are going to find the canonical sum of product form. So this is what we are going to do. Suppose we have an expression something like this, a plus b dot c. Now in this first term, what is missing? b and c is missing. In the second term, what we are going to do? In the second term, what is missing? a is missing. So what we are going to do is, we are simply going to write a dot 1 plus b dot c dot 1. Now why 1? Because I am not changing the expression because a dot 1 is a and b dot c dot 1 is still b dot c. That is, I am not changing the expression. That is very important. And next what do we have? a dot instead of 1, which literal or which boolean variable is missing out here? Naturally b and c. So we will start with the first one that is b. So we can write b plus b complement. This is because b plus b complement is 1 plus b dot c dot 1. Again 1 for 1 we can replace it with a plus a complement. So we can tell this to be as a plus a complement. So what do we get now? a dot b plus a dot b complement. And similarly this one is a dot b dot c and applying distributive law to multiply plus a complement dot b dot c. Now what do we have? We have a dot b dot 1 because again in this two terms c is missing plus a dot b convent dot 1 plus a dot b dot c plus a convent dot b dot c. This will remain as it is. Now for 1 we can write it as c plus c convent because that, this is the variable which is missing in this term. So plus a dot b complement dot c plus c complement plus a dot b dot c plus a complement dot b dot c. Now what do we have? a dot b dot c plus a dot b dot c complement plus again this part a dot b complement dot c plus a dot b complement dot c complement plus a dot b dot c plus a convent dot b dot c. So now what we are going to do, we are going to simplify this a little bit. a dot b dot c plus a dot b dot c is simply a dot b dot c because a plus a is a and rest I don't think there is any repetition. We'll keep it as it is. c convent plus a dot b convent dot c plus a dot b convent dot c convent plus a convent dot b dot c. So you can see in this particular expression, we have every term containing all the literals. That means all the variables are present. You see abc is present. In this term also abc is present. In all subsequent terms, the variables abc is present. So this is what we call the canonical sum of product. Now canonical sum of product, you can also find it using a truth table. So for the same expression, what I'm going to do is, I'm going to find the canonical sum of product. But this time using a truth table and we are going to see whether the canonical sum of product which we get, that is the sum of product from a truth table is same as the canonical sum of product which we found algebraically or not.
So here we are going to use the truth table technique. So A, B and C. Let's write the combination 3, 4. Again 1, 2, 3, 4. So we have 8 combinations. And then 0, 0, 1, 1, 0, 0, 1, 1. And then 0, 1, 0, 1, 0, 1, 0, 1. Now we are going to first do the AND operation B and C. So 0, 0, 0, 1. Sorry, this is 0. This is 0. This is again 1. This is 0, 0, 0. And this is 1. Now what we are going to do, we are going to do A or B and C. So this two will be orange. So this is 0, 0, 0. This is 1, this is 1, 1, 1, 1. So this is what we get. Now we are going to find the sum of product expression. What we are going to get is the canonical sum of product. Let's see whether it works or not. So canonical, I'm just writing it. Canonical sum of product because even in canonical sum of product, actually it is the sum of all the min terms. So let's do this out here. You can see, look at the ones in sum of product. We always look at the ones. So what do we get? A complement dot B dot C. Look at the next one. That is A dot B complement dot C complement. Look at the next one. That is A dot B complement dot C. Look at the next one. That is A dot B dot C complement. And finally, we have a dot b dot c now you try matching this with what we found when we found using the algebraic technique you'll find that they are exactly same so you can find either way either algebraic technique or if you find it too difficult to apply in an algebraic technique you can always create a truth table and find the normal sum of product form you'll get it in the form of canonical sum of product that's it. Now we'll try finding the canonical POS for a particular Boolean expression. Even for canonical product of sum, we are going to find first, I'm going to show you the technique for finding the canonical product of sum uh, using algebraic techniques and later on using truth table. Now suppose you have an expression something like this and uh, you can see that it's a product of sum but it isn't canonical because all the variables are not present in every term in the product of sum. So what we are going to do, if you look at this particular expression, in this particular first term, that is a plus b, the variable c is missing and out here the variable b is missing. So what we do, when we apply the algebraic technique, there we were ending 1 out there and here we are going to or 0. So what do we do, a plus b plus, we'll write 0. Similarly, a plus c plus 0. Now what do we get? a plus b plus we can write c dot c complement and for this a plus c plus we can write this as b dot b complement now we can apply distributive law to break this so what do we get a plus b remember the formula a plus c and here too what do we have a plus c plus b and a plus c plus b complement. Now a, b, c is getting repeated twice. So we'll write it once because a dot is a. So a plus b plus c. And then what are we left with? a plus b plus c complement. And a plus c. Uh, let me write b complement first. b complement plus c. That's it. So this is the canonical sum of uh, canonical product of sum. So we can tell this is canonical product of sum. So when we apply algebraic technique, we are going to add zero to it. Now we'll try to find the canonical product of sum using a truth table. The technique is once again same what we had learned for canonical sum of product. But this time we are going to find the product of sum expression. Okay, now we are going to learn to do it using the truth table technique, the canonical POS. So suppose we have this A, B and C. Now we are going to try, uh, you know, three variables. So eight combinations, two, three, four, one, two, three, four. Again, zero, zero, one, one, zero, zero, one, one. And here we have zero, one, zero, one, zero, one, zero, one. 
Now we will start with the first one that is A plus B. So we will find A plus B. So here we have 0, 0, 0, 0. Sorry, this will be 1. This will be 1 because it's OR. So here we have 1, 1, 1, 1. And then what are we going to do? We are going to find A plus C. And in A plus C again this one 0. And then we have 1, 0, 1, 1, 1, 1, 1. And now what we are going to do is we are going to find A plus B dot A plus C. So this is what we are going to find. So here multiplying this we get 0. This is also 0. This is 0. And uh, rest is all 1. You can see that. Now we are going to write the canonical product of sum and what do we get? Look at the first zero. In product of sum we always look for the zeros remember. So for the first zero what we have is A complement plus B complement plus C complement. Sorry A plus B plus C because this is what we have for canonical uh, for product of sum. Zero will remain as it is and one will become its complement. And next what do we have? We have the next zero that is A plus B plus C complement. So we have A plus B plus C complement. And finally, we have one more zero that is A plus B complement plus C. So this is what we have. So this is the product of sum and as well as canonical product of sum. And why canonical? Because every term in this particular expression have all the literals or all the variables out here. So hence it is canonical product of sum. So it's either B you can solve either you can use the algebraic technique if you find it comfortable or you may use the truth table technique if you find it comfortable. So that's it. Only I can tell you for smaller expression uh, using algebraic technique is far more easier compared to you know a larger expression where we have to write a lot. In that case if the expression is too big you go for the truth table technique. If it is smaller you can go for algebraic technique. I can tell you only this much. Okay, so we are going to continue with our discussion on Boolean Algebra. And uh, today what we are going to do is we are going to learn about the different secondary operations or secondary laws. So I can write secondary laws or operations in Boolean Algebra. So today we are going to start with that. So what are the different, you know, secondary laws in Boolean algebra? So what are they? First, number one. The first one, what we are going to do today is the NAND law. NAND is actually opposite of AND. That is not of AND. So if I design the truth table, it is something like this. input and output I am taking two input uh, you know truth table so if A and B are the uh, you know two inputs so what do we have 0 0 1 1 similarly 0 1 0 1 and here you see the output will be simply opposite to NAND and so 0 and 0 used to be 0 However, out here it will be 1. 0 and 1 was supposed to be 0. Here we are going to get 1. 1 and 0 we were supposed to get 0. But since it is opposite we will get 1. And 1 and 1 we were supposed to get 1. However, here we are going to get 0. So this is the not operation. So you can tell NAND is basically this. A dot B, A and B whole complement. So that is the operation of NAND. And remember the logic gate for NAND. The symbol which we use to represent the NAND logic is this. We draw it this way. So this represents a NAND logic. So that's it. It's that simple. Now we are going to go for NOR law. So now we are going to start with the uh, second law that is the NOR law or NOR logic or NOR operation. And then we are going to see the gate that corresponds to it. So we'll start with inputs and outputs. And here the operation is opposite to that is not of all. Simple as that. 
So how do we write this? Suppose we have two Boolean variables A and B and these are the combinations. I believe you are practicing and here what do we have? This is A plus B whole complement that is A naught B. So it will simply be opposite to OR. So 0 or 0 was supposed to be 0 however in this case we will get 1. And here it was supposed to be 1 for OR but we will get 0, here 0, here 0. And the gate that corresponds to NOR is, we call it NOR gate and symbolically we draw it this way. This is how we draw the NOR gate. That's it. Pretty simple, isn't it? Now we are going to learn one more secondary law that is the ZOR gate, XOR. Now for the third operation that is ZOR law or ZOR operation also sometimes called XOR meaning exclusive OR hence the name ZOR that means a special type of OR it is understood with that. However before going for the construction of this ZOR uh, you know truth table let me tell you a certain rule which is associated with ZOR. So here I will write it for you. So now we are going to learn the ZOR operation or the ZOR law. It's pretty simple. But before getting you know deeper into the details of the ZOR operation, we are going to understand the construction technique that is associated with the ZOR operation. So this is what I'm going to write first. If the number of true inputs, if the number of true, that means one, inputs is odd then the output or result is 1 otherwise 0. So this is what we get for the ZOR operation. We will try this now. Uh, suppose these are this is the truth table which we are going to create inputs and outputs. Now we'll try with the operation as stated out there. I believe you are keeping a note of everything, whatever I am trying to tell out here. So we have two Boolean variables E and B. And let's see what happens. Uh, 0, 0, 1, 1. So I have these four inputs possibility 0, 1, 0, 1. And now what do we do? Look at the first you know if the number of true inputs now in the first row how many true inputs are there that means how many ones are there in the first row there are no ones that means it is considered to be having zero ones so if it is zero number of ones zero will be considered even number so if it is an even number we'll write zero only when it is odd odd then the output is one otherwise the output will be zero Look at the second row. How many ones are there? In the second row, there is a single one. And only one, uh, you know, true input is there indicating that the resultant is odd. So if it is odd, we'll go for one. Again, in the third row also, we have a single one. So we'll call it odd and therefore the result is one. In the fourth row, how many ones are there? There are two ones. And 2 is an even number. So once again, it's 0. So this is what we get. And symbolically, we write it this way. A, Zor, B. So this is how we write. Encircled plus. That's the symbol which we use to represent the Zor operation. And the Zor gate. Of course, uh, that is left out. Zor gate. The Zor gate, uh, a modification of the OR gate. Because it's special type of OR gate. Exclusive OR. So this is the ZOR gate. This is how it looks like. A very interesting gate. We have it out here with the ZOR operation. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to show you a three input ZOR truth table. Just elaborating on whatever apps mentioned out there. So we have the inputs and here we have the outputs. So here what we have now we are going to find the ZOR operation. So A ZOR, B ZOR, C. So what do we get? 
So out here you notice that out here how many ones are there in the first row? There is no one, so zero. That is considered to be even. So we'll write zero. Now out here in the second row there is a single one. So one is an odd number, so therefore one. Again out here one, so odd number one. Out here how many ones are there? Two. Two is considered even, so therefore zero. Out here single one, so that is an odd number, so we'll write one. Out here two. Two is an even number, so we'll write zero. Here how many are there? Two. Two is an even number, so we'll write zero. Again out here three. Three is an odd number, so one is the output. So this is what we get for the three inputs or truth table. So this is how we do it. Now we'll go for the next one that is the XNOR gate or XNOR operation. XNOR law or XNOR operation, this is what we are going to learn. This is basically opposite of ZOR. So whatever you have learned with ZOR is just the opposite. You can imagine it, is, it to be the not of uh, ZOR. So here if the number of true input is odd, then the output instead of being one, it will be zero. And reverse is the case when the number of true inputs is even. So this is what we get. Suppose we have the inputs and we have the outputs. So what do we do? Pretty simple. A, B, 0, 0, 1, 1, 0, 1, 0, 1. Now refer to the ZOR truth table. 0 and 0 we were supposed to get for, uh, for your ZOR uh, operation. What were we supposed to get? We were supposed to get out here 0. However, we'll get out here 1. Similarly, 0 and 1. We were supposed to get 1. We'll get 0 out here. Just the reverse. And here 0. Here again 1. And symbolically, it is written as A x nor b this is how we write encircle dot and uh, the x nor gate corresponds to this particular symbol so we write it this way so we have a circle out here this is how the x nor gate looks like you know a slight modification of the zor gate so that's it. These are the different secondary operations in Boolean algebra. And this secondary operations are used in multiple places in designing different type of circuits when it comes to designing electronic circuits. So we are going to first, you know, uh, see this, uh, some of these gates in details, uh, rather in greater details. So now I'm going to talk about the two gates which we have already seen that is NAND and NOR gate. These are two unique type of gates why I am going to tell you and you are going to even you know observe it. That is these two gates are called universal gates. Universal gates. Now the reason for calling them the universal, universal gates is it is possible to create every other gate using either an AND gate or a NOR gate. That is, you use a combination of NAND gates or NOR gates to create every other gate. Even an entire logic circuit can be designed using either an AND gate or you may use only the NOR gate for designing it. Now, this makes or, you know, uh, results in making electronic circuits pretty easier or in other words not just easier the word easier won't be you know suitable out here it makes it more economical because instead of using three different type of gates which is quite complex to create we are going to create just a single you know gate to create an entire microprocessor so that is why these universal gates are so relevant in today's computer science so first of all we are going to understand you know how these gates can be used to create the basic gates that is AND or a NOT and then we are going to slowly understand how we can you know uh, extend it to uh, create an entire logic circuit out of either NAND gate or NOR gate. So first of all we are going to learn using NAND gate the first thing what we are going to learn is creating a NOT gate. So we are going to learn how to create a NOT gate using the NAND gate. So first of all you have to do a little bit of you know uh, 
algebraic methods which we have learned and of course the drawing part is there. So first of all we are going to do it this way. Not of A is represented as A complement and remember with the NAND please keep this in your mind that we have to bring the entire thing in this form A dot B whole complement because this is A NAND B because this is A NAND B. So we'll try to bring every operation in this form. So in that case, we'll be able to create a NAND bit. So we have, this is A complement. So this can be written as A dot A whole complement. Remember, we had learned this in AND laws. So A dot A can simply be written as A and bar is there. That is the complement. It is still there. So now what do we have? We have this can be, if that is A dot B whole complement is A NAND B, what, what can we call this? This we will call it as A NAND A. So if it is A NAND A, what we are going to do? We are going to draw the logic circuit or the logic gate associated with it. So how do we do it? See over here. Pretty simple though. We have one input because that is what we get for the not operation and then it is divided into two lines that is we are trying to give the same value to both the inputs of the NAND gate and this is the output so it is somewhat like that I'll just put an arrow it's not necessary but for you to understand so this is how the entire thing works so the resultant is a complement let's try to see what actually happens over here uh, I'll give you a, a small instance that it is working exactly like the NOT gate Let's see, suppose the value of A is 1. Now this 1 gets divided in two segments. That is, we get 1 out here also and we get 1 out here also. Now you refer to your NAND truth table. 1 NAND 1. What did we get in that particular row? You will find that we got 0 out here. So when the input is 1, we got 0. This is exactly how the NOT operation works. Now we will try with the uh, 0. Let's see what happens. Just rubbing this out so that you do not get mixed up. So now if it is 0, when we divide this, there are two inputs which are 0. So if it is 0, NAND 0, look at the truth table which you have learned for NAND, we got it as 1. So whenever we have 0, what is the result that we get? We get 1. So isn't it working exactly like the NOT gate? So that is why we call this the NOT gate. However, we use the universal gate NAND to design the NOT gate. So I believe you understood the technique of designing a NOT gate using a NAND gate. So now what we are going to do is we are going to try drawing the, the second one that is OR gate. We will try drawing the OR gate using the NAND gate. So this time what we do, we will write it this way A or B can be simply be written as A plus B. This can be written as A plus B double complement. You see this is also called involution law. Why? Because A complement complement is always A. Because you can understand suppose A for uh, A is uh, 1. And 1 complement is how much? 0. And 0 complement is how much? 1. So whatever is the value of A, you always get, get that. So we can tell A plus B is equal to A plus B double complement. That means I am not changing the statement in either way. I am complementing it twice. Now what I am going to do is, the inner complement, what we have is, I am going to break that. Using, remember the famous De Morgan's law. So we are going to break the inner complement using De Morgan's law. So how do we do that? We write it this way. A complement dot B complement whole complement. What I did was I just broke the inner complement. So A plus B whole complement became A complement plus became dot and we have B complement. The outer complement is still there. Now we have already in this particular form. So we can write this as if that can be written as A dot B whole complement can be written as A and B. We can write this as A complement NAND. B complement. And what is A complement? A complement, we have just learned that it is A and A. So A and A and B complement is similarly B and B. 
pretty simple so the entire operation can be done using the NAND gate so I'm going to try drawing the logic circuit related to this so I have A and from here what do I have A and A similarly what do I have B and B so I'll draw once again from here So here we have B and B and this two are again NANDed. So here this is what we are going to do. Again it's NANDed out here. So that's it. This is basically an OR gate. However we are using only the NAND gate to design the OR gate. Now the last primary operation is left out that is creating the AND gate. So we are going to try that now. So we'll try drawing the third gate that is AND gate of course using the NAND gate. It's a continuation of what we have learned that. So here let's try this. A and B can be written as A dot B. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to put double complement out here. Just like the operation which we had done for the OR gate. However, unlike OR gate, we were breaking the inner complement using De Morgan's law. Remember, we were breaking the inner complement using De Morgan's law. We were getting it as A complement plus B complement. However, we are not going to do that operation over here. Because if I break the inner complement, what will happen is I will get the NOR form instead of the NAND form. A complement dot B complement, A dot B whole complement will give me this. A complement plus B complement. Now this is no longer in the NAND form. So we cannot use the same technique. So what we are going to do? We are going to follow a very simple technique. I am going to show it to you now. Let A dot B whole complement be X. Therefore A dot B double complement is naturally X complement. So this can be said to be as X dot X whole complement. Now this is in this is in Present in the NAND form, so we can tell this to be X NAND X. Now, what we are going to do is we are going to substitute the value of X that is A dot B whole complement into this equation. Now, let me write that substituting the value of X, we get what do we get? X represents A dot B whole complement. NAND A dot B whole complement. So this can be said to be as A NAND B NAND A NAND B. So I got the entire stuff using only the NAND gate. So if I draw the logic circuit, it's pretty simple. First of all, let me draw A NAND B because it's been NANDed twice. So simple, first of all, I'll draw A and B. That's pretty simple. You see over here, A and B. And here, this both this A and B are again handed over here. So what I'm going to do is, I'm going to follow a very simple technique. I'm going to bifurcate this output into two outputs. So we get A and B and A and B, which is again handed out here. So this is what we get for the AND operation using a NAND gate. See how simple it is. Now what we are going to do is we are going to try drawing all these three gates using the NOR gate.